So Kai Wheats sent me this detector and it's cheap. Um, I think it's like 139 bucks on sale. So this is nowhere even near any class of detector I've ever detected with. In fact, the cheapest detector I've ever used is the AT Pro, which I loved. So I guess the real question is, will this find stuff or would you even recommend someone starting out even use this? Now, right off the bat, I have not even used this yet, but it does take nine volt batteries and I'll tell you what, that'll get expensive, for sure. I remember the AT Pro, I spent a lot of money on batteries, so you might be saving money on the machine, but boy, you're gonna be spending it on batteries. Now I do like the system for bringing the armrest up and down, but the problem is for a big guy like me, this armrest barely fits my arm. I know this is kind of uncomfortable right off the bat, and this is very heavy and lopsided and it's kind of weird how the the coil is mounted on the back seems like if it was mounted in the middle it'd be weighted a little bit better but this is a very heavy machine and if this was meant for kids i don't think they could lift it to be honest so it seems to come with like six modes you know your standard stuff like all metal coin shooter mode you can notch it out we're just going to do it in you know, all metal, and we're gonna do what most newbies do. We're gonna start in a playground, <laughs> see if we can even get a piece of clad with this thing. So, so this is gonna only have one frequency, single frequency. The machine that I've come to love and enjoy uses multiple frequencies simultaneously, which gives you a huge advantage. It'll quiet it down, help you find more targets. Now I've used. The AT Pro in the past and the AT Max with a lot of success and those were single frequency machines so it's not like this won't work but it's definitely not top of the line technology that's for sure. General criteria in even owning a metal detector is I want it to be waterproof because I spend a lot of time out in the lake hunting. I don't want it to get ruined when it starts raining. Now it does say it has a waterproof coil but every machine has a waterproof coil. What's important is does it have a waterproof box, which this one doesn't? Uh, Kai Wheat sent Dana detector to try out. I won mine on I Dig History. Thought it'd be great for the grandkids. So far, it's a little too heavy for the grandkids. And haven't found any real treasure with it yet. <laughs> I found a piece to a mirror in the yard off an old car and that's the only signals I got on my yard and been down here at the beach a little bit and got one nail so far but hey we gotta give it a chance see what see what it'll do says it's in the zinc rings so what's your number there 60 67 65 64 jumping around a little bit and Dinwiddie he got the uh, headphones they didn't send me headphones and I should say, they sent me this for free to review, but this will be an honest review, as you can tell already. All right, dig that sucker up. We'll see what we got. Yeah, no, no. Let's see. Is this here? Right on the surface. It is a coin. <laughs> Holy cow. What do you got there? Uh, memorial. Cool. Wow. Yeah. So you found something. Found something. No more than maybe an inch deep. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how we can get. Let's see. Wow. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a piece of foil down there. I just want to show you. I don't know if you can see what I'm seeing, but the recovery speed is terrible on this machine. You almost can't get the... Like half the time you don't get the sound going back the other direction. Yeah, Dinwiddie's got a penny and a... Penny and a pencil. So two pennies and a pencil. I'm yet to find a target yet. 
I think that might be a target. Man, it's so hard to tell with this machine. The recovery speed is so bad. Oh. You know, usually I can tell a lot more too, you know, to get kind of chirpy if it's a coin, but look, I'm just, that's crazy. I hate to say it guys, but I didn't know that metal detectors could even be this bad. Look at that though, it was a penny. Boy. Dang, okay, so I mean it does find stuff. Watch, I have a dime right on top. Half the time it'll beep like five or six inches to the right or left of it. Another, we switched playgrounds because the other one didn't have very many signals. He thinks he's got something there. Penny, so you can find stuff. Not very deep. And it would pop up into the quarter range every now and then. I can't find anything with a detector. I mean, what's crazy is Dinwiddie's a pro with it, so I guess he finally found a way to beat me. I don't know if I should be embarrassed or proud of it. <laughs> All right, Kai Wheats. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to review your metal detector, but it's terrible. <laughs> I mean, it will find stuff. So you got that part right. But as far as usability, I mean, here's the deal. I really enjoy this sport and I am not enjoying using your metal detector. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. <laughs> I feel like if you're a beginner and you use this metal detector, the, the best outcome you could have is that you had a good time, but you realize you need to instantly upgrade to a better one. So it's just a waste of money, honestly. I feel like, you know, there's a lot of other detectors out there in the two or $300 range that you're gonna have a better time with. Honestly, I recommend going with about a $500 metal detector at least, because you're not gonna enjoy this sport if you don't find stuff. I mean, everybody I talk to that doesn't like metal detecting never found anything. And for me, I was lucky enough, I found a gold ring on my third day out. So, you know, that kind of sent me on a 12-year treasure hunt that's never ending, almost daily. But this ain't it, guys. I mean, you want an honest review? You got it, you got a lot of work to do. This this is this is in the lowest tier that you can get. I just I wouldn't do it, guys. Spend your money somewhere else. I hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one.